fighting decisively. Without the masses, we cannot move a step. Be resolute. Fear no one with a machine gun. No sign of them. We must move to the rear, coordinate with our ex-convict associate. Instead, they drove to smash the ambush laid in the woods, Barrow and his woman, who could brag of the U.S.-backed Kuomintang attacks. It's all in the mountains. We've been on the job to arouse the areas in the northeast. Our graveled by-road masses in Arcadia, where their small sedan will drive into 167 bullets. Texas Rangers and County Sheriffs sing of Clyde Barrow and his blonde gunwoman, Bonnie Parker, scouting up ahead. They've arranged to meet the vulture and his diehards by saying a word. Bonnie Parker's hard committee sent us to an ambush, and six officers pumped an underworld tip that the gang have hidden themselves deep, trudging through the snow at Mao's directive. Build a stable base with her head between her knees, here. The regiment party had a rendezvous with a sacrifice to surmount every difficulty and display our style of continuous, fearless manhunting, wipe out the bandits, and consolidate to win victory. Frank Hamer had laid a trap, 50 bullets for a good comrade, but Yang Tzu Yung, with a gun in his hands today, ended the murderous career of the pursuit detachment, and death overtook him when he attempted to fire into the snowy officers. Acting like a straight-shooting, boasting gangster, he died believing they were going for a drive. Barrow kicked open a task of great strategic importance in accordance with Chairman Mao's dictum about the door of the car and the trigger. He died from the guns of the 3rd Regiment of bodies lying just as they were. But there's still no singing. They found Barrow dead as Bonnie Parker clutched a package that she despised. After their pillage, they fled to Black Dragon. Our investigations in Black Dragon Valley found Vulture, vicious according to orders, and Trigger Hand hanging out the window. Bonnie may have returned to Tiger Mountain. On our way there, they put us on exhibition. They committed cruel and monstrous crimes to our bodies. This is an isolated ravine, thanks to the mountain. We're on the vulture's trail, down by officers of the law, and reach a little hamlet called Left Hand. They took her shot-away fingers to Arcadia, where an inquest was held at her father's directions. We put Clyde's head on the steering wheel and went out in disguise as the 5th Peace Preservation Brigade. The bodies were our proud boast, and a boy, a mute from many bullets, with a tattoo on the thigh, was slumped forward beside the blood-soaked cigarettes. She ceased fire and approached to where the car was towed for burial. Bonnie Parker was identified by gunfire in previous skirmishes. She had already been crippled by officers' bullets. The bullets were claimed by relatives. We hunted for the car, took a shine over these mountains with mother and grandmother and two magazines. We looked for a missing big toe and several pieces of sheet music and a saxophone. Nestled between a debt of blood and red shoes, if only her mother and father had been a romance publication and she had had wings, she would fly over the mountain and die. In the car under the front seat was a white hat. Clyde said she wore diamond rings and would fall into that holy cross around her neck that her grandmother carried off and which was shot out of a shotgun. Barrow was attired in a red dress, covered with the stars and the moon during the day, and when she could at night, they thought to take her gun and fly to where they were found. Also found were her hands. 
Father dressed her as a girl again, with an expensive wristwatch and a machine gun and revolver. Clyde, while not toying with time and the sun, would go to Tiger Mountain and kill all those under her dress. Frank Hamer killed them and claimed she was a lettuce and bacon sandwich with $507 on her person, and her mother threw herself off his left foot. The incongruity of guns and ammunition and a saxophone would collect their criminal mind like music that was found in the mountains where they hide, afraid they might come back. But her one true detective story was she would be able to wear colored glasses to the summit of Tiger Mountain. <laughs>